Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you with another adventure into history and Dan and I have been out for uh, the past couple hours this morning looking again for the old ball cemetery and we may have found it. I believe we have found it. We have found it. There is a low wall. It's not a rock wall. It's a concrete wall. This is it. This has got to be it. My heart's pounding now. Let's see right here. There's a marker right here. There you go. I'll use a hand. Okay. Yeah. See that? Yep. This is it, that has man. not been disturbed in at least 35 or 40 years. Oh my goodness. Here it is. See a lick of writing on this one either. So that possibly would be Mrs. Ball's well. I don't know. I don't see any deep imprinting, but there may be something scratched on it right there, right under your hand. Look up. No. No, it's just a. Okay. Uh. So Mr. Ball's grave is going to be on. Either this side or that side over there. I see. This is it. This is it right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's it, man. Nathan Ball right here. That's it, Nathan Ball, man. Has not. No one's been able to find this grave for a real long time, and here we are. Yeah, this grave has been lost for a long time. Yeah, it has. I've spoken to a lot of people, and they say they have hunted it for many, many years, and they have not been able to find it. Yeah. That's it. See the stickers are getting to me. It says sacred to the memory of Nathan Ball, born September 7th, 1828, died April the 3rd, 1878. Our father. So Nathan Ball is buried here. His wife was buried here in 1919. She lived a good long time after he died obviously she's in an unmarked grave and also there is a daughter buried right yeah there's a daughter too yeah oh here are the other graves dan uh the rockaway author wrote that he said that one has writing too yeah look there's there's one here and there's one there and another one going up the hill so there's at least three other graves here too so this must be the uh the wife in the middle and the daughter on the end dan spotted it we haven't recorded all day uh we started out earlier with a descendant of Mr. Willis who used to own this property and uh, we, we searched for a couple hours then had lunch came back and yeah I would like to give a shout out to Stephen Johnston uh, Mr. Robert Willis's grandson who came out with us this morning and uh, Stephen was able to show us all the places where the grave was not <laughs> that's right now that down by that I mean he knew the places that he that the grave was not located that are overgrown now. Yeah. And he was able to tell us 
this was pasture it's not there and this was you know the way it looked when i was young and it was not there and so we did come by this area and uh we saw something that we thought was an unmarked grave right over there earlier a sunk spot and uh, Stephen had to go so we, we walked him back to the highway and uh rob and i went and get lunch and we came back but uh before we left one of the adjoining landowners here came by and he deer hunted here and he was able to tell us that the graves do exist and about where they were and uh I'd like to give a shout out to him also yeah and that that's was right mr watson right yeah mr watson that's thank you mr watson so anyway we were able to locate it just now yeah after how many days was searching yeah this is uh i think this is my third or fourth day <laughs> of searching in many many hours and and there are many many descendants of these people living locally that do not even know where this is yeah and a lot of them have asked me you know if you find out where it is please let us know so we'll be in contact with them uh, and let them know that we have found it and the directions the old directions uh, of this place so far off somebody needs to delete those directions absolutely that, that does not work uh I know that we're not supposed to scratch on a grave with a uh, hoe or something like this, but these things have got such thick covering on them. I'm just going to lightly rake it back. At least 30 years. Yeah. And then I'm going to let you work your magic with, uh, with your bare hands. All right. <laughs> See, it says our sister right there. Yeah. That's Look at it. that tree growing up there, though. Uh-huh. That's at least 50 or 60 years, if not older. And in memory of Katie S. Ball. Now, I don't think her name is actually recorded in any of the things I've seen. No. It just says a uh, daughter. Yeah. Live very long, I guess. Katie S. Ball, born January 25th, 1871, and she died March 13th, 1889. Really an engraving right there. That's nice. These are nice. Uh, I believe they're concrete. In the bottom, it says our sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they are concrete. Wow. And somebody. Uh, built a nice form and poured a concrete wall around this little plot yeah so that it would be forever preserved and in a way it is it's it's still here it's not gone it's preserved but it's not uh what you would call easy to locate definitely not here you are katie ball born january 25th 1871 died march 13th 1889 there's detail on that engraving in the stone right there and of course our sister at the bottom and then this and, is uh, and this this is mrs ball buried here now she died in 1919 so there were a lot of people when i was coming up there were a lot of people that remembered her well especially her granddaughter who lived down the street from me in waverly hall uh dr stinson's wife mrs edith stinson Mrs. Stinson was a Hanson before marrying Dr. Stinson, and her mother was the daughter of uh, Mr. and Ms. Ball, and that's her mother's sister, Katie. So Mrs. Stinson, I think, was about 19 years old because she was born in 1900. So she was around 19 or 20 years old when her grandmother died, uh, passed away. And uh, so she's the one who originally told me many years ago where this cemetery was, but but it was like, oh, you can see it from the road. <laughs> it, you can see yeah. it from the, maybe, maybe in her day, but not, right. not now. Right. As a matter of fact, we're, we're actually over the hill from the road, aren't we? Yeah, it's actually, and that's an, another thing, it's kind of on the side of a hill. Yeah. The Rockaway author did write about walking up the hill behind the old ball shop. and uh, so, so now we know the, uh, the approximate location of where the ball blacksmith shop was. Yeah. Uh, between here and the road. Uh, the blacksmith shop, the post office, and the store. 
Now, Mr. Ball's son uh, moved to Waverly Hall when the railroad came through. And they left this blacksmith shop out here and went to Waverly Hall and built one. And that became the, the Ball blacksmith shop. And at one point, Mr. Ball and the Bird brothers were in business together. Ball and Bird, and then it became uh, Ball and Bickley. And, and eventually, Mr. Ball just went out on his own and uh, had his own place. And then his son became a blacksmith in Waverly Hall also. His name was uh, Edwin Ball. But, uh, and you have a fire poker, right? I have a fire poker that Mr. Ball right here, his uh, his son, Robert Calvin Ball, I believe was his name, that he made and gave to his brother-in-law who had a store in Waverly Hall. And his name was Charlie Smith. You, you know, you have, you have a good photograph of that store. And uh, Mr. Charlie Smith's daughter gave me the fire poker that has a little cage that, the, uh, that Mr. Ball built on it as part of the handle and inside of that cage is a little agate marble. Yeah, it's really neat. We'll have uh, to take a look at it after we uh, get finished here. Yeah, when we pass back through Waverly Hall, we can stop and see the ball graves there. They were, you know, later because his son lived until 1925 and uh, he's buried right there in town in the Waverly Hall Cemetery. Uh, but supposedly there are other graves outside of this enclosure. Yeah, it's all too uh, old. I believe now that those are graves that we saw over there earlier, don't you? Must have been. All right, so we have kind of done the story of Ballville on some previous videos, but now that we are here with Nathan Ball, who the town was named for, um, it's the most notable citizen. Uh, what can you tell me about Ballville? Well, uh, Nathan Ball came here and established a plantation across what's now Highway 315, right out there. We're in the, now we're on the Talbot County side of Highway 315. Uh, the highway runs all the way across, all the way to uh, the other side of Harris County, Georgia. <clears throat> but we're on the uh, far eastern side of it. And Nathan had a big plantation right across the road here, and he built a house there. But he was most known for his uh, blacksmith work. He was a master blacksmith, and he was known for training a lot of blacksmiths in the area. He trained his sons to be blacksmiths, and uh, he married a local girl. His wife was a Calhoun, and her family lived close by, and her family was uh, highly educated. She had, I believe, a brother that was a well-known professor in the area, and very instrumental in starting schools and things around here, you know, all kind of institutes of learning. Uh, <clears throat> but Nathan, when the Civil War came on, he was uh, drafted into the Army and went to Columbus. He was, he was uh, made a manager, if you want to call it, uh, or supervisor or something over the ironworks in Columbus. He was one of the foremen down there over making cannons and cannonballs and all the other things that the ironworks did. I would imagine they did everything from making uh, wagon wheels and, and tires for wagon wheels and all sorts of things. Anything that the Confederate Army could use, they manufactured it there at the Columbus Ironworks. And he was one of the people that worked there. And uh, after the war, he continued on working hard until the cyclone came through here, the storm of March 1875, and it blew away his house and his shop, everything that he owned, and he started uh, over. And Nathan Ball's house um, that was blown away was a two-story plantation house, but after the cyclone, he basically lost everything, and uh, the house that he rebuilt that stood across the street was just a simple uh, one-story house that would often be uh, confused with something that a tenant farmer might live That's in. That's right. It was very simple. And it stood until uh, maybe, I guess, 40 years or so ago. I was a kid when it was torn down and uh, one of the Willis family members, James Willis, built a house on that site. It was where the log house is. It's now owned by the Upton family. And uh, that was where Nathan's big residence was. And then when it blew away, he built a smaller house. That house was very modest, very, very modest. And he lived there only for 
three more years. He died in 1878 uh, at 49 years of age. But after he died, his wife stayed there in that house. And her children grew up and went on. You know, the railroad came through Waverly Hall, what's now Waverly Hall, and uh, the son, Robert Calvin Ball, moved over there and built a blacksmith shop and raised his family there. But they were in the wagon manufacturing business in a big way. They made wagons and buggies. And when they came to Waverly Hall, uh, Mr. Ball went in business with the Bird Brothers. And it was uh, Bickley and Ball, then it was Bird and Ball, and then, uh, then it just became R.C. Ball. And then after that, his son, Ed Ball. Well, Mr. Ed Ball was blacksmith up until he retired, and that was the end of the blacksmith in the Ball family. It was the end of the blacksmith as far as I know in the local area. Mrs. Ball remained on at the house over here across the road until she died in 1919. So she lived in that house after her husband passed away for 41 more years. And it's been said that she was the last of the Ball family to live in Ballville. And she remained there until the day she died and then she was brought out here and buried in this little family cemetery which was behind what had been the Ball uh, blacksmith shop, the store, and the post office for Ballville, which by that time were all gone. And another thing that's interesting is we have uh, written accounts of Nathan Ball. Uh, it was a wonderful account written on his life uh, and, and the whole family by Ms. Wileen Hansen in Shiloh. Mrs. Hansen, or Miss Hansen, uh, she was a sister to Ms. Edith Stinson in Waverly Hall. And of course I knew Ms. Edith Stinson very well. And Miss Edith used to speak of her grandmother because she was 19 years old when her grandmother died because Miss, Miss Stinson was born in 1900 and she lived to be up in her upper 80s. And I knew her very well because she lived just down the street from us. And I grew up with her son. And my older brother grew up with her son as well. But uh, he's one of the ones that had asked me if I ever found this place to let him know where it was. Well, anyway, Miss Wileen Hansen lived in Shiloh and she was the family historian. And she wrote a very good account of, of their lives. And included in that account was the fact that uh, one of the Ball's sons of Nathan and Miss Ball moved to Texas and in her old age Mrs. Ball went to Texas and lived with him for about uh, I think 11 months 11 or 12 wow. months just so she could get to know those grandchildren out there because yeah. you think about it in uh, that time in history that, that was a long way from here to Texas that's right and to get to go out there and spend some time with, with and see what her son had, had done out there that was that was really something for her and she came back home and uh, lived the rest of her life here. So. In that written account is a prayer that Nathan Ball said um, everyone had run from the store and taken shelter in the Ball house. And Nathan Ball was remembered as saying a prayer before the storm came. Uh, they referred to it as the Mount Airy tornado. This tornado in 1875 devastated a, or left a large path of devastation throughout this area. And uh, it was remembered that Nathan Ball prayed uh, that, Lord, um, let us be thankful for what we're about to receive. And before the storm hit, and uh, that was remembered because the storm took the roof off of the house and didn't hurt anybody inside. So they were thankful for that. Yeah, that was the same storm that killed the entire Kennan family about four miles uh, west of here. Yeah. Uh, killed the mother and all of the daughters. I think there was about, what, six or seven of them? Seven members, I believe. But anyway, it passed right over here. It went right across. It blew away every house from here to almost to the city limits of Tarleton, and then it lifted up. But it blew away the Culpeper home and the Harris home, and uh, the old Walton home was right across the highway over that way across from uh, the Willis's near that entrance to Timberline North subdivision. And Mr. Walton, uh, everybody called him Major Jack Hare Walton. He was called Major Walton. And anyway, the, he had the only house around here that had red painted shingles. He had painted the roof of his house red because, you know, red roof was supposed to uh, represent hospitality. 
and this was a major road out here, this old federal wire road. So his house was open for travelers, and it was known as the house with the red roof. And they said that shingles from that roof were found as far away as South Carolina. Oh, wow. Red wooden shingles. Yeah. And I believe it was also said that Nathan Ball's house was a uh, stagecoach stop. That's true. Along the way. Yeah, these people over here, they, they did what they could to make a living. And, you know, there were a lot of travelers on this road. And if you stopped at a house, they would tell you, you know, we don't have any room here, but try down at Nathan's house or Mr. Ball lives down there. Go down there at his house and try. You know, and they kept biscuits in the cupboard and people lived off of biscuits and ham and, and or sausage or whatever they could eat. You know, travelers were travelers and they, they were looking for a place to stay just overnight till they could make it to Columbus because it was right at, from here by wagon, it was right at, uh, I think, 12 hours from here oh, to Columbus wow. by wagon. It's like 30 minutes today. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. So here he is. We have searched and searched and searched for Nathan Ball, and I could not be more pleased to uh, have been able to find his grave. Is Nathan Ball, Anne Elizabeth Calhoun Ball, and little Katie Ball down at the end there. Now, another thing that I think it's important for us to point out is the fact that there are a bunch of graves outside of this wall. Um, we know who these people are. We don't know who's buried here. And Anne Elizabeth Calhoun Ball's grave is not marked. The only reason that we know um, who she is is from oral history um, and a written account of this cemetery. Uh, otherwise, she would be an unknown. So if you look down here, there is a field stone and a field stone at the head of the grave. You can see a clear indention right there. So there's a grave. So this is, we've got three there. We've got four. We've got five. We have six. Probably seven. I just stepped on a stone right there. Eight. This is rock covered. And the, and the Rockaway book uh, indicates flint stones for uh, grave markers. These, uh, a lot of us call them quartz old white quartz rock yeah they're they're plentiful in this part of Talbot County but these were put here for a purpose you know there yeah you can see that and uh, that's obviously a grave right there yeah it is right and I think there's another one there. yep there's that's a grave because look down there there's a there's a footstone or headstone right there Dan, when we set off looking for three graves, I didn't think that there would be this many back behind this lot either. There are quite a few graves out here. And those first graves that we saw this morning. I believe they are right They're over right that over tree. There. So this is how close we were searching for this this morning. Um, I didn't film any of our earlier uh, searching for this like I said we were just doing it for a couple hours and I uh, wanted to wait until we found anything to film it but this is how close we were these were the first two that we found this morning that one and that one so we were right there <laughs> looking for it and the cemetery was but look over right down there can yeah you see it from here? no I cannot <laughs> and I will say this this is not a good location for a cemetery no. uh, compared to the the other pieces of property that mr ball owned this goes back to what we've said long ago about other cemeteries that this place had to have had a special meaning absolutely to be chosen uh this is the side of a hill there's a much better location right up there which that according to mr willis who was interviewed back in the 1970s that is where Nathan Ball's shop was, and he was buried behind his shop. But we don't know if these other graves were here prior to his burial That's or right. after his burial. Uh, if I had to, to guess, I'd say that some of them were probably here prior to that. Uh, uh, you know, he, we have no idea who they were, if they're uh, former slaves or if they were slaved, people that died during, during the slavery times or if they're people who worked for him. He had a lot of employees. Uh, Mr. Ball, I will say, also came along at a time when uh, there was a, a big blacksmith shop west of here, between here, about halfway between here and Ellerslie. 
and it was owned by uh, the Jones family. No, not Jones, the Wells family. And we went down and found a rock wall around their cemetery. You remember they're buried back off the road behind there. And uh, later research indicated that that was the Wells family buried in that rock enclosure. But that was a blacksmith manufacturing place where they actually manufactured wagons. And it went out of business about the time that Mr. Ball was starting this. Gotcha. So that was a early settlement thing there from 1830 on up till about 1855 or 1860. Uh, that's when the Wells family died off. And I believe that uh, Mr. Ball took up where that left off and his factory, of course, was, was well known up until the storm hit it. But we've all heard of Ballville all of our life and this is the center of it right here. Yeah, and it's, it's incredible to think about it. I mean, it really is, it's just woods here, but there was a, a store and a post office. I think that was the Amos, Amos's store. Yes, I believe. later it was Amos's. Yes. And, and Mr. Amos, who ran this store, his son moved into Waverly Hall and ran a store there. And Mr. Amos wound up uh, owning a big livery stable in Waverly Hall. And he, he closed the store and operated the livery stable up until his death. Gotcha. So it was the Amos store and post office, the ball shop, and numerous, numerous old um, plantations and... Uh, farmhouses around here that's it's all gone it's all gone except for the chimneys that we found and the cemeteries and it is no longer a thriving community it's just a waypoint on a map let's try to get a count of these graves um we've got three over there in the rock wall and then there's four five six seven eight nine ten 11 right there there's 12 and there's 13 that's the one with the rocks on it 14 where Dan is 15 there's a field stone marker there so 16 so quite a few graves out here i'm i'm probably wrong on my number because i see so many indentions as we as we come in and i really start looking at it like right there and there's some that are just marked by rocks that haven't really formed an indention so you know probably in the neighborhood of 20 graves at a minimum here so what started off is you know i thought there were three lost graves out here there's there's actually closer to 20. After many, many days of searching and many hours spent searching, we found it. Nathan Ball and the last of Ballville here. I would say I never had a doubt that we would find it, but I was at one point pretty sure that this was lost, lost to time forever. Yeah, well, we're, we're, again, we're limited on the time that we can come because we did have to get permission to be on That's the right. This is all private property now, and uh, we certainly thank the, the owner of the property for letting us come out and find this. So it's kind of almost bittersweet finding and now having to leave this grave site as we have. This, this search for Nathan Ball has been pretty much my primary focus for the past few weeks, ever since we first attempted it, and I read more and more and learned more and more about Nathan Ball. And... At a certain period of time, you almost feel like you know these people a little bit. And now we have to, we found them and we have to leave them again. But if you can see, as we back further and further up, just how hard it was to spot these graves here. We have walked all around this area multiple times. And before today, when we walked back behind it, never saw it. I was just up there and in there. Sir? 
10 feet away from it and it blends back into the wood. Exactly. There it is, right there. And you never know it. So we're about 35 yards from that grave right now. And just again, to give you an example, because the thing that's kind of amazing me now is we walked all throughout these woods, all throughout this area. And that grave was right through there. I mean, you probably can't see it on camera. I can see it. Um, but that grave was right, right through there this whole time. But this is why we could not find it. It was so, so forgotten. This is, would you say that this is probably the most forgotten grave that we've ever come across? It is. I yeah. believe so. Uh, because it's not necessarily forgotten. It was lost. Yeah. Uh, there's been lots of people to look for it in the last 45 years. And everybody said the same thing. Well, it's, it's right out there past where the blacksmith shop was, where the blacksmith shop's been gone since the 1800s. Yeah. So, how, how would you know? I mean, uh, the, the house that was here later, there's a few people who remember the, uh, the house that was on the little one acre fenced in area that's, that's here. And, but that's been, that was vacant and disappeared before I came along. So again, with the, without the help of, uh, one of the neighbors here, I don't think we would have ever found yeah. it. Yeah. As a fellow who hunted out here, um, who just happened, I mean, this is how this stuff, um, kind of happens sometimes. We had searched for a couple hours this morning and as we pulled out, um, guy stopped to talk to us and, uh, told him we we're looking for a cemetery. And he said, oh, that cemetery's up there. And we're like, no, not that one. Looking for another one. And he said, oh, that cemetery's out there. He said, but you'll never find it. And he gave us um, directions. And, you know, it was an area that I'd recognized uh, what he was talking about from the many, many hours spent walking in circles around here. And uh, even, even at that point, I was not sure that we were going to be able to find it until Dan was walking back through here and said oh here it is and uh, he'd seen the rock wall or actually concrete wall is written in the rockaway book that it had a low rock wall but this was a actually a concrete wall and we stood right here talking about this cemetery this morning dan said that these look like graves right here and they are <laughs> yeah and they are we were right here talking about it. Um, well, well, we probably spent 30 minutes just talking right here. And there's his grave right there, over that wall, over that fallen tree. There it is. One there. I thought that looked like a grave as I walked mm -hmm. across it. So there's probably 30. One there. 30, 40 graves out here. Is that one? I believe so. I just wonder how far they go that way, cause yeah. that's so. Uh... And you know, we even commented on the old growth of trees right here. Yeah. So just doing a little bit extra scouting, see if there's any other sign of graves in this area. So you always want to get as full a uh, documentation as we can of these places before they do get lost forever. Um, I recorded the GPS coordinates of this grave right there. So, you know, we've got that for future generations, obviously this video well documenting the site. But just to look around, you know, the, in all of, in all of the other documentations of this cemetery, there's not much mention of the other graves, like this one that I'm standing on right here, um, of the other graves that are around here. There's not much mention of it. Um, I think the Rockaway book, 
um, refers to uh, just a handful. Um, and there's, you know, we're finding probably up in the neighborhood of 40 graves here. There's one right here. See a field stone head, field stone at the foot right there. And I don't see any more in the new pines, but if that was timbered, they could have been erased. Dan, as we as we leave Ballville, Dan has discovered something. Come around on this side, look more. It's gonna look better from that side. Yeah, it does. Uh, this is known as the Ballville Arch. <laughs> What, what was the Ballville Arch? Oh, this was the entrance to Ballville. Is it? This was the official entrance, yeah. That's right. When everybody, when the Civil War ended, they welcomed everybody home right here under this arch. Did they? So they got on each side, yeah. And this is all that's left this of it? This is all that's left. That's right. <laughs> this is the Ballville Arch. Oh, Dan's been in Ballville too long. All right, we better go. Man, every time I have come out here, Dan, it's been, I don't know, it feels like there's going to be a tornado. I tell you, I, I'm not usually, you know, we talk about getting lost in the woods. I'm not usually one that really gets turned around in the woods, but as long as it's sun shining, but the sun is not shining today. It's cloudy. And if it weren't for that highway out there, I wouldn't have a clue which oh, yeah. direction to go out of here. No doubt. Just go toward the sound of the cars. Can you imagine, though, the, uh, the people of Ballville? Even hearing, you know, even if someone, if I came from the future and said, man, I got lost in the woods looking for Ballville. Oh, they'd be like, what in the world? Right. Well, that was all mm -hmm. fields and, and pasture and business. Yeah. Right here, right here too. Right here was business. I just want to say too, that I have never been lost in the woods, but I was bewildered once for a couple of hours. I've been bewildered. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't take much to bewilder me, <laughs> uh, especially on a cloudy day. All right, so we have left Ballville, and now we are in Waverly Hall, Georgia, um, in the Waverly Hall Mount Zion Cemetery, and we are at the grave of one of Nathan Ball's children, Robert Calvin Ball. And tell me about him, Mr. Dan. This is the son who became a blacksmith like his father, and he moved into Waverly Hall and opened a blacksmith shop here uh, right after the town was created near the railroad track. And his blacksmith shop was in business there up until he passed away in 1925. And then it went to his son, Edwin. And Mr. Ed Ball ran the blacksmith shop for a long time. But uh, Mr. Ball here, he was known as Mr. Bob Ball, the blacksmith. Uh, he's the one that made that fire poker that I, that I showed you. And uh, his wife, was Mr. Charlie Smith's sister. Mr. Charlie Smith ran the store in Waverly Hall, you know, the big mercantile company. And Mr. Charlie's buried right over there. But, uh, but Robert Calvin Ball, it was his, uh, one of his siblings that moved to Texas. And uh, you know, his sister is one of the three graves that we just visited out in the woods of the Ball Cemetery. So Robert Calvin was the son of Nathan and uh, I guess I should have looked up her name. I can't remember what Mrs. Ball's first name was, but she was a Calhoun. Anne Elizabeth Calhoun. Anne Elizabeth Calhoun Ball. Ball. Yeah. yeah. Here he is, Robert Cal Calvin Ball, born September 28th, 1854, and died June 14th, 1925. He would have grown up in Ballville, where we just left, uh, survived the tornado out there, and as Dan said, moved to Waverly Hall in about the 1880s. Is that when the railroad came Moved through here? here? 1886. Uh -huh. So here's another Ballville descendant here, Thomas J. Amos, born February 12th, 1870, departed this life February 22nd, 1926. His epitaph reads, an honest man is the noblest work of God. Although he sleeps, his memory doth live and he was a mason, so you can tell me about him. He Dan. was the uh, one who moved here from Ballville uh, and became a livery stable uh, owner. Uh, in other words, when the railroad came through, they, they had what they called jobbers who would come out on the railroad, not jobbers, drummers, I'm sorry. Drummers would come out on the railroad and 
have crates of merchandise and drummers were what called on the small stores out in the country and they would go to him to rent a horse and a buggy and they would hitch up their horse and buggy and they would travel the countryside and one drummer may represent a shoe company and the next drummer may represent a, a sewing thread company and you know it was it was everything that you had in your store was represented by a different salesman Gotcha. And those salesmen were called drummers. And Mr. Amos, that, that's how he made his living was uh, renting out horses and buggies to the people who came out on the railroad to call on their customers. And at the end of the day, they would come back and turn in, or you know, or maybe they may stay out a couple of days and travel the whole countryside around here. But they would inevitably come back and turn in their horse and buggy to him and uh, catch the train out of here. Yeah. And the picture that you have of Mr. Charlie Smith's store has two drummers on the front porch. Oh, really? I believe of Mr. Brooks, and I can't remember the other one's name, but they were drummers for, uh, I believe Ms. Fleeman told me that they were representing that shoe company, that the sign was placed on the front of the store, mm -hmm. Shield Brand Shoes. Uh, they, they were representing that company, and it happened that a photographer came through that day and made a picture. Wow. But Mr. Amos is buried as you can see there's mr ball right over there and then mr ball's sister excuse me mr ball's wife her brother mr charlie smith is buried right there so they're all right here in a little area together and the bickley's and the balls were related and the bickley's are right over there and right up there there's some more of them so and then of course there's the birds all right so we've made it back to waverly hall and to Dan's shop, where we've actually got a couple of relics um, from Ballville. This was made by Robert Calvin Ball. Actually, it was made here in Waverly Hall, but he came from Ballville. And he was a blacksmith, just like his daddy Nathan Ball was. So tell me about this, Dan. Well, he crafted this little fire poker and gave it to his brother-in-law as a gift for his brother-in-law's potbelly heater that was used in his store here in Waverly Hall. And I don't know if he made that or if he got that off of something else, but it's a little, I don't know what you would call that. It's, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, that little ball was put on here and he made this little cage to put this agate marble in. And you can see that old agate marble has been through a lot of heat in its years. But Mr. Charlie Smith's daughter, Ms. Aileen Fleeman, gave this to me in Christmas of, oh, probably 19, 80, 1982, something like that. And uh, she gave it to me to use with my pot belly heater, but I've never been able to bring myself to use it for that because I thought too much of it. I was afraid something, I wouldn't want to drop it and break the little marble, but I'm sure it would work just as well. She said it used to be a lot longer and her daddy used it down, you know, over the years. Well, yeah using it in his store. In the Charlie Smith store, right? Uh -huh. It's awesome. And this is another relic of Ballville that my son Briley's holding. This is a, a crutch. Now, I don't really know the history behind this crutch. This crutch came out of the home of a man named uh, William Bryant. They called him Bill Bryant. And I remember when I was little, Bill Bryant still drove a one-horse wagon around oh, wow. Tauba County. He had a, a little iron-wheeled wagon, and he had an old mule that would pull it. And we're talking about 1969 or 70, along about in there. But anyway, when Mr. Bryant died, many, many years later, his vacant house was being cleaned out. And I remember going out there because the owner of the house had given me some things and uh, and we went there and this was in a closet at the house and I almost left it behind but my daddy said you need to get that because that is really something that tells how t how difficult it was for people who had health issues back in the old days you couldn't just go to a store and buy a crutch if you broke a leg or a hip or something uh, this was made out of white oak. Someone split this and wedged this handle in here and put a nail through the ends of it. And then the top piece is made out of an old chair rocker. 
and you can see where he put that on and drove a nail through that. He cut the, you know, bevel the edges here on each end of that. But that's right, pitiful. Yeah. <laughs> but it served the purpose that he needed it for. For sure. He could have been injured in the Ballville tornado and needed that. That's, uh, that is entirely possible. Uh, a lot of the Bryants, you know, they lived through the tornado. The Bryants and the Bussies, they were all related. And they all lived through the tornado. And uh, this could have been something that was used after that. He might have gotten hurt. Could have belonged to his grandfather, his father or his grandfather, because they all lived for two or three generations in the same old house out there. But, uh. It's neat. One of the few relics of Ballville. Right. That's awesome. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed seeing this video. We did it. We found the grave of Nathan Ball, which is amazing. Um, we also got to see these. Uh, old Ballville relics and uh, some more of the balls uh, where they're buried at. So hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and we will see you next time on another adventure into history. And this one's been a heck of an adventure. It has been. Yeah, we even saw the Ballville Arch. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>